Hi there, I'm John from sandboxranch.com and today we make a whole bunch more custom banks. I had two main goals when I developed sandboxranch.com, specifically the banks that I'm offering. Uh, the first one was to make custom banks and by custom I don't just mean you can choose A or B. You can choose endless options on it however you want so it is very much your own custom bank. And the other option, the other thing I wanted to get going as well was that to, ma to make it affordable. You know, there's no point offering an amazing titanium bank if the cost of it is like three thousand dollars, because I don't think too many people would order that. So you want something that's very durable, but you want something that's cost effective, and you want something that's as clean as possible right off the machine. That's why I invested into this machine here. You see behind me here, because. I wanted to get something off the machine that required as little sanding as possible. And the only way you could do that is if you have a very rigid gantry and a rigid machine. What you'll see throughout the video is this here actually just moved back and forth. This does not move side or front to back at all. It's the table that moves front to back. And the advantage of that is you can have a far heavier table and you can have a far heavier and rigid gantry. Because now this guy doesn't need two mortars on both sides to push it back and forth and to break it. It just goes back and forth. And the results have been astounding. Uh, other things that I've developed over the past six months is custom bits. Um, the typical bits I've been using for years uh, here in my shop is they're totally fine for almost everything. Uh, but when it comes to production of red oak, which is a very hard wood, uh, and I mean that really, really hard, it's really tough on machinery. If you have a really great machine, but you have really crappy bits, what will happen is you just fly through your bits. They're just garbage. So you need custom bits to do custom banks and you need very much a custom huge machine to make them as well. So what we're going to do is I'll show you how we go about making all the banks. They all start off with a rough cut uh, red oak and then from there I chop it into smaller pieces. I do the lamination and then I start doing the production on the machine. What I really enjoy about creating my own product, uh, it's quite a change from all the custom work that I always do here in the shop, is that I have time to optimize settings, optimize every aspect of the job over and over and over again until I have something that's really, really nice and finished. Uh, when I do custom projects for customers, uh, generally it's you know one or two units or it's a couple hundred units. And after that, I might not do that same sort of process for a couple months or maybe years. So there's a big lag in sort of that knowledge sort of still gets stored away, but a lot of it just goes away. Now for these banks here, I do them on a regular basis. So every time after I've done a production run, I go back at the video that you actually see happening right now. And I say, well, if I did this, this would be better. If I did that, that would be better and so forth. So it's quite a different process involved with making a product versus custom fabrication all the time, which is again, my basically my day job. So in this case here, um, using four bits to produce these banks. The first bit uh, does actually the chamfering all the way around on the banks that require them and that's a popular option. I, I don't think I do many that don't have the chamfer because the edges can actually be sharp. After that I have a roughing bit that carves out all the inside uh, as fast and as efficient as possible. And then after that I go back over all those areas and I do the finishing. And then after all of that is done then I go ahead and use this bit here, which you see, and it's drilling all the holes that the screws will go into so the acrylic adheres to the, right, uh, the red oak perfectly. And I really enjoy that aspect of it because I used to do a lot of stuff manually and it's so nice to have a machine do all of the work for me. All right, let's do a little show and tell. First one is Albert, so it's the letter A. You can see the laser engraving here. So it's very subtle because there's no paint filling. You notice there's no chamfer and it's got the brass screws as well. The next one is actually one that I made for myself. Uh, this is actually one of the first prototypes I made um, at sandboxranch.com. So in this case here, it was obviously rejected because it has some issues with it, but to me it's perfect. It's a reminder of how far I've come. Uh, you can see here there's some wood splitting and that kind of stuff, but to me it doesn't really matter. This is how it all began, basically. Uh, so you have transparent acrylic, you have a black paint fill, again it's reverse, because you can see how the reflection continues. Now if I, if I laser engrave the front of it, 
when you put the reflection over it, you'd actually not see the reflection where the engraving is. Uh, of course, that's your option which way you want it engraved, but to me personally, I prefer this because it's a nice, cleaner, much cleaner look when it comes down to it. Of course, it has no chamfer. Uh, back then, I couldn't really do a chamfer on these things, and it's just basically all made with one bit. Actually, shows some of the production issues I was having. You notice the ledge at the top here? Uh, I was having that problem because I had a non rigid gantry and I was doing red oak, which is a very hard material. And what was happening is I was going over it, but the actual, the whole top part of it was sort of, you know, veering off a little bit off. And you don't have to go off a lot, uh, even a fraction of an inch, you'll notice it as soon as you have shadows going onto something. And the screws are the metal screws, of course. The next one is Connor. So you can see here. So this is the tint, smoky, acrylic. And you can see Connor, if you get the light right, you can see how it's sort of, let me just, I got the light up here and I have the camera down here. So there we go, you can sort of see it now. So it's like a stealth bank, basically. You roughly know how much money is in there because you can still see through it, definitely. You can see the inside of it. Uh, but the name again is just a, like a stealth sort of look to it. This has no paint fill at all. If we did a paint fill on it, if Connor wanted the paint fill, uh, you'd actually see it a lot more clear because right now what you have is a smoky tint and uh, laser engraving maybe a sixteenth into it. And if we did the paint fill, well then all of that would brighten right up. And that's a great example of the next one coming up. Of course this one has no chamfers. And it has the black screws. Can I wait for a paint fill? You can see the difference. Now in this case here the paint fill is actually white but because this is the neon blue acrylic, uh, neon blue acrylic with sort of semi-transparent with white means you end up with a very light blue paint filling even though this is white. And you can see here there's no chamfer. You have the black screws. You can see, it, again, depends on the angle. You can see it a lot better or worse. But this is what I really enjoy about making these banks. Each one is completely different than the other one, and that's what I really enjoy. Uh, it, the shop here, I always do custom stuff all the time, and I enjoy that. You know, if I was doing a thousand banks, banks totally identical, I'd probably get bored pretty quick. But, you know, as you saw, just in four banks, the diversity is amazing. Now it happened kind of fast in, on the previous section of the video of me showing you how I do these. Um, and that is the carving out the outline. So again, I, then after I change all the bits, I go back to the first roughing bit again. I carve out the outline and then I go back over that again with the finishing bit. That's the nice thing about having a tool changer. You can use the same bit multiple times for different processes and produce a you know, really fantastic finished product. And the only thing I can't really do with that is use a jigsaw afterwards with the CNC to carve all the stuff out. It just, it just doesn't work properly for that process. So that's a manual process. And as you can see here, this is another manual process. What I'm doing is removing all the ledges all the way around. Uh, that's a little bit less than an eighth inch thick. Um, I'm still optimizing that process as, as well with the CNC machine. Um, I like to get a little bit thinner, but there's a lot of variation between the production runs. Uh, red oak is a natural product, some of it more, needs more flattening than others. So, you know, th there's a little bit more give and take regarding the ledge and having to manually do the router work all the way around. All right, now it's time for a little bit more show and tell. Now I'm just showing you this S here as an example. This is the typical size of the banks that you see. It's the default size on sandboxranch.com. And I want to show you the one I made for my son. So this is what 12 inches looks like. So I'll put them side by side. So you can see, I didn't just scale the top of it, I scaled the whole bank 12 inches. So for my son, it's the same thickness as the other banks. The 12 to 8 is not much of a difference. If we go to 25 inch tall banks, we of course go bigger and smaller, whatever you want. Um, of course we'll add like little feet on this to support it properly. Now for Simon, that's my son's name. So it's the same red oak as all the other banks and it's laser engraved on the front and you can tell right away, you can see the reflection. So if I reversed engraved it, you would see the reflection all the way through, but because I engraved the front of it, 
it breaks the reflection. And the material here is actually blue neon. So it's an acrylic. Can't really tell because the light is pretty good at stopping the light. And this neon acrylic is actually available in a few different colors. Uh, we have orange, we have green, and we get other colors as well, but it's a limited time supply based on our suppliers. And of course here you have a chamfer all the way around. And the chamfer makes a very big difference. Uh, if you don't have a chamfer on the bank, it's still a wonderful bank, it's totally functional, everything's fine with it. Uh, what, what it does, it helps break up the light a bit, gives it a little bit more aesthetic appeal, but also makes it not sharp. Uh, what can happen with edges, uh, especially of a hardwood, is that they get kind of sharp because we're using CNC machines that are very precise and they'll make that thing, you know, as sharp, not as sharp as a blade or anything like that, uh, but it, there is some sharpness to it. So that's my son's bank. And this one here is, again, default size. This is another bank. This is X. And it's engraved, again, you can tell on the front, because when I run the light over it, you can see. And that's, of course, an option. So if you want to have it reverse engraved or in the, re engraved on the front or the back, there's no real difference here. It's the same process. There's no difference production-wise at all. Same thing goes with paint. If you want a paint filling on the front or the back like this, uh, reverse engraving, it, the process is identical. There's no difference to me when I do it. The biggest difference with this one here is that the screws, so they went with different colored screws all the way around. So you have the brass, you have the metal, brass, metal, brass, metal, brass, and over here you have the black onyx. So that's a pretty cool look. I kind of like it. I never thought of having different color screws on a bank, but you know, that's what people come up with. And that's what makes this kind of fun for me. This here, another bank for Marcel. So black onyx screws. Again, you have a chamfer, which is a really popular option. And the letter M. And all the banks are laser engraved on the back, by the way. So then you always know where to get more or to buy some for friends and family. Now this is for a family. So all of their kids all have a name starting with A. So this is Anton. I can't hold all three of them at the same time, but they all have exactly the same spec. spec. Alex. And Alpha. Now these are all paint filled with silver. And again, you have the chamfer, you have metal screws, and based on the color, you can tell right away it's got tongue oil applied. I think, yeah, this batch here, all of the banks have tongue oil. Here we have Darcy, you can sort of see there. So again, laser engraved, you can tell right away on the front. Black onyx screws, chamfer, red oak like all the other ones. And of course, tongue oil. Here we have Chloe. Again, you can see here. Now it's kind of hard to come out on the video. It comes out nice and clear. Like when you look at it face to face, you can clearly see that it's engraved and you clearly read it. It's just really hard on the video for some odd reason for it to pop out well, because the lighting is always a little bit different on a camera than it is in real life. Here is Benjamin. Now, of course, these are brass screws. You have chamfer. Uh, this one has no chamfer, so they went not with that. Uh, the finish that you see on the laser engraving is actually a copper. So it's like a, a, a smashed copper. It's a really cool way you get with paint these days. You get a lot of really cool special effects with paint. And all you do is paint it and it automatically gives you that look. So I'll try to zoom in and try to get focus going. So it almost looks like hammered copper. That's actually pretty cute, pretty cool. But of course you want flat copper, that's fine too. But I like the hammered look. I, I like the additional aesthetic of other details in the paint when it comes to making custom banks. Here is October. Again, camera's not picking it up well, but it is definitely there. There, there you go, you can sort of see it there. And this one here has no chamfer. Black onyx screws, tongue oil as well. This is Kevin. Yeah, so if I hold it like this, you can clearly see it. And this is basically the way it looks like when you look at it face to face in person. Um, the camera's just not picking up the contrast very well. 
And I think this batch here, all the bags were engraved on the front. And again, it's just a personal desire as to what you want to have done with that. Black onyx screws, letter K. Here we have Brady. I really enjoy what the Thermod does now to these banks. Um, it's a really nice finish that I'm achieving. I don't have to do very much sanding at all compared to what I used to do with my other machine. The results are really, really fantastic all the way around. So the, what the router does here, laser does here, then I put it all together and I ship it out. Here we have Mackenzie. This is actually the second part of the one that was for Benjamin just now. It's got the same finish, so it's got like a hammered copper on it. And of course, at the company, since I make all these things literally from scratch, um, if you want different font options, that's totally available too. You can have fonts going anywhere on the surface as well. So you have a lot of different options when it comes to customizing your bank. Uh, like the Benjamin one, you have brass screws all the way around. And this one has a chamfer. Now we have a pair. So Jarius and Jeremy. There we go. Now you can sort of see it. Now they both, ha both have a chamfer. This one just has brass screws, tongue oil. This one has metal screws, tongue oil as well. And again, the laser engravings on the back. Uh, if you want to have any customized uh, wording on it, this is a great location for it as well. And we could also, of course, also laser engrave the inside of this too. So when it comes to customizing your bank, tons of options available. Uh, visit the website and you'll just get an idea of what's possible, but we can also do a lot more than that. Now the final process here is actually making the acrylic fronts. In this, in this case here, it's a transparent blue that I chose for Simon. Simon is my son, by the way. So what I do is I do the carving first, do all the holes, and those holes match perfectly with what the CNC router did in the red, wall, or red oak. And then after that, I could actually cut them out. Everything just fits perfectly. It's just such, such a beautiful thing. Because uh, again, I used to do this stuff manually a couple months ago before I got the machine with the tool changer. And now that I can do it automatically, it just speeds up so much time. Because I don't know, I don't need to drill pilot holes. I don't have to do a lot of stuff. The machine just does it and everything lines up perfectly. Now again, here I'm carving it out. The reason why I have different masking for these ones is that this acrylic here comes with a plastic mask. So if I were to do the carving like this on it, um, I would melt the plastic to the acrylic around it, and it would just be a mess. So I need to remove the masking, the plastic masking. This one here, as you can see, has plastic masking. So you remove that. Then if there's some engraving to be done, you, car you cover it again. Then you do the laser engraving, and then you do this, the paint fill, if that's what you need to do, and then you take that off again. So it's a bit more of an involved process. So what I'm doing is trying to talk to my supplier about getting acrylic that all has a paper mask because then I don't need to apply a secondary paper after removing the initial mask. So again, there's always room for optimization. Now, if I'm not doing any paint filling, I could just do what you see here. Just do the laser engraving directly. Now, <clears throat> I did have some customers ask me about the difference between uh, engraving the front versus engraving the back and, you know, reverse engraving. The biggest difference is probably visuals. Um, if you do the front, it's a lot more apparent. And if you do the back in a reversed way, um, it's still there, you can see it, but it's just not as sort of in your face, sort of speaking. And it's the same thing with the paint filling. If you do it on the back, it's a little bit more nuanced. If it's in the front, it's there. You can definitely see it. I found, you know, as I've been doing these production runs, that most customers actually want it on the front. So to me, there's no difference at all production-wise. But it's, you know, whatever the customer wants, that's what I make. So I hope now you get an idea of what we can offer you at sandboxranch.com. All of the products that we have there are available to order right now online, along with all the options that you could ever imagine. If there's anything else that you want added to your custom bank, we could do that as well. I'm looking, I'm always exploring new options and new ideas of what people come up with. And that's the fun part about this business. So order your banks right now at sandboxranch.com. We'll make them for you, ship them right to your door.